Welcome to Creativity, the podcast where art and engineering collide. In this podcast, we discuss our personal endeavors ranging from woodworking to electronics, art, and life in general. My name is Jeremy S. Cook, and this is my co-host, Max Maker. Hi, everybody. Our special guest tonight is Andy George from the How to Make Everything YouTube channel. Hi, thanks for having me. As engineers, we always start from today's technology and see where we can go. But what if we had to start over from scratch? Andy has learned about this, and we're thrilled to talk to him about this fascinating subject. So Andy, can, can you tell us a little about yourself and, and what you do? Um, yeah, so my YouTube channel is basically explores the, uh, the question of what if you couldn't buy something? I and mean, what if you couldn't buy any of the ingredients and you had to start all the way from scratch? Uh, what would that take and what, how would it turn out? And the answer is usually it's very hard and turns out pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, so what's the farthest back you've ever taken anything? I mean, have you, you know, say, uh, gotten you know, iron ore out of the ground and, and produced steel? Or how far have you taken this? Um, for most, most, most of my projects, I try and start from as, a, as the ingredients are naturally available. So um, basically, um, either growing it myself or going somewhere where somebody else is growing it or finding uh, the mineral source. Um, I did try and get iron once. I went to an iron mine in northern Minnesota, and uh, they let me give me a tour and show me some of the iron, but they wouldn't really let me take any, so um, <laughs> couldn't actually mine it myself. And then I did a really horrible job of turning it into actual iron, and hopefully to revisit that at some point and actually do it a little bit better. Um, but usually, usually the ground rule I have is as it's naturally available. And there's, there's some flexibility on that. Um, I don't raise too many of the animals from scratch, from birth or whatever. And um, um, so it's usually kind of assuming like you could find a cow in the wild, theoretically. So I'm going to go to a dairy farm and milk it. <laughs> nice. so, so you say you did a horrible job at that. Did you actually get iron from it? I mean, that's still quite an accomplishment. Uh, I, I, I think so. It, it was magnetic in the end. Um, so okay. there's like a lump of, uh, probably to the, the Smith we were working with afterwards. Um, and he, he's like, well, yeah, you made l really bad iron, but it is iron. So that's all that counts. I'm, I'm sure you know the channel, uh, primitive technology. Yeah. Yeah. The, the guy that makes stuff from, he, he does really from scratch, doesn't he? I think he's coming close to iron soon. Yeah. Yeah. He's the guy that makes me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, it's funny. I was watching your uh, some stuff about you. Now, you, you started out in chemical engineering, correct? And then you switched to uh, f film making, or is that, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. When I was in high school, I took a bunch of college courses with the intent of going to chemical engineering, and then got two years into it, and was like, I kind of want to do something more creative, and ended up going into video making, and now um, that eventually led to being on YouTube. And doing this project has now led to me uh, um, going back into chemical engineering and really wishing I'd finished that degree. That's, that's just interesting. So I was watching that and I actually started out in chemical engineering myself, but I, um, I switched to mechanical. I guess, that's, I guess that's the closest I got to something creative. I don't know. <laughs> but did you do creative stuff before while you were in school? Um, Anything with videos? When I was in school for chemical engineering, or no, uh, no I mean in, in general, because you said you started off uh, studying um, chemical engineering, and then you wanted to be, do something creative. But didn't you? Weren't you a creative person before? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I always kind of, kind of dabbled in stuff, but I, I didn't really dive too deep into it. Um, I thought mostly I just like to make things and just kind of anything in general. So I thought chemical engineering, I kind of like chemistry and it's engineering, so it's making stuff. So maybe I'll like that. And then I got into it and it's just very technical, more technical than I was expecting. And it was, then I was started looking at other things and it was around that time that I just started playing around making videos with friends. And it's like, I, I like this as a medium and um, kind of went, decided to go to college for that instead and uh, kind of has slowly evolved into what I'm doing now. Yeah, well, we noticed you you, uh, you started on TV actually, right? Yeah, uh, we actually, so I, I started the project actually five years ago when I made the sandwich from scratch. It was just a project I was doing on the side. Um, so I'd finished, I went to school for mostly post-production work and then got jobs, uh, worked, worked at a few different ad agencies doing advertisements and stuff in town here in Minneapolis. 
and um, <clears throat> got kind of bored of that. So I, on the side, I kind of wanted to go into documentary filmmaking. So I feel um, <clears throat> um, uh, so I, I figured out in my free time, I'd just uh, start some sort of documentary project just to get going in that direction. And that's where I started the sandwich um, documentary. Um, and just did that for most of a year, basically. And um, when I was done, I was like, this, is, this was a lot of fun. It's really cool. And I could apply this concept to so many other, other different things. And I, I put the, the, the sandwich one into um, local documentary or local uh, film festival and got the local producer saw it. And she thought, like, this could totally be on TV. And, like, she had some connections and uh, to some networks and tried pitching it to them. Didn't end up going anywhere, but then um, she put me in contact with some other people, and they had uh, uh, um, a time space. They were able to get they had a connection to get us a time slot on a local television uh, station here. It was kind of an off-channel, secondary channel, and it was evenings on Saturday, so it wasn't the greatest. But we figured we'd just uh, turn, it, turn it into a series, kind of show what it could be, and uh, make, it, make it on uh, television, and hopefully get picked up for something bigger. And uh, at the end of that, uh, not much really happened. And uh, then we kind of transitioned to maybe maybe it'll, something will happen on YouTube. And um, then it was uh, that fall that uh, I cut together our, the whole sandwich thing down to cut it down from like 30 minutes to three minutes and threw it on Reddit and it just went viral and uh, got like a couple of million views in just a few days, I think. <laughs> wow. It's really cool. So, you know, to us, you know, it looks like you've been extremely su successful at YouTube, but do you, do you feel like you still need to grow quite a bit or do you feel like you've accomplished something awesome or what, what does that look like to you? Um, I mean, we kind of had the, after our initial viral success, we had kind of a challenge of like trying to make this sustainable and keep it going because it, it is hugely time consuming and um, to produce enough content for YouTube, you have to be doing it almost full time. So um, that first year was a huge struggle. And like we, after going viral, we started like 60,000 subscribers, which starting from nothing is a huge jump. But um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, going, going from there, it, like you need to be a bit bigger to like even be on people's radar. And um, so we started out this year, like, not sure, like, can we continue doing this? Or is this just going to be kind of a part-time hobby? Maybe we'll do one or two projects a year, and that's it. Um, but as a, So I decided I was going to, like, dedicate, we're going to do it full, full on this year, try and produce as much as we can, kind of try to play to the YouTube algorithm as much as possible and grow and have this kind of number. I had roughly estimated, like, if we can reach this, then we can actually afford to do this full time. And we're like just reaching it right now, so um, in that regard, I feel like we're we are finally kind of making it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and there are three of you, right? Uh, yeah, yep, we're a three a three person team. Well, that's that's awesome. So, have you been doing this part time this whole time? Uh, it's. I mean, I do freelance work doing video production, adver advertisement stuff, like I was doing before, basically. So it kind of comes and goes. Um, uh, they usually do like a month on whenever they need me, and um, that's when our videos usually become a little bit more sparse. Um, <laughs> so that that usually helps pay the bills and kind of fill in um, whatever money I still need to actually pay the bills and everything. Um, but it's it's basically been a full time job this year just to make it make as much content as we've been trying to make. Yeah, something that we discovered with our uh, the previous guests as well was that even if we don't get paid for this, we still do it because we like it. Like we do other jobs to pay for YouTube mm -hmm. if YouTube doesn't pay off. Yeah, and that's as I definitely enjoy doing this. Uh, it just if I had to have a full time job, I would not be able to do nearly as much as I do now. Yeah, because your your videos are so elaborate. Like they always uh, seem to me uh, to to involve a road trip, and I always wonder like how does he manage that? He he goes to so many places. He goes to a farm to uh, to get uh, sugar cane. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in the Caribbean was it? Mexico. 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 Yeah. Like going all the way there just for a video that that seemed incredible to me. Like the effort you put into your videos. Yeah, and uh, I mean when you're committed to doing it all the way from scratch, it kind of forces you to have to travel a fair amount of 
places. Um, so we try and do it and arrange it in the way that it is most uh, economical. Like when we went to Mexico, we shot like five different series there. We shot one on coffee and chocolate and okay. tequila and cochineal. And mm. so we collected as much as we could while we were there for future episodes that like we're only doing the cochineal now. And that was like almost two years ago that we actually were in Mexico. Um, and th- then we just recently did a trip to Utah and we collected a bunch of stuff and we've only used like a third of it so far. We still have a bunch of other stuff uh, <laughs> for future future. Just episodes. in case. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me pick this flower. We might use it one day. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. It was kind of a mad scrabble. Like, okay, we're going to go to Utah. What is everything we might possibly need for the next 20 years? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so just like, you know, doing this, you know, having to go to, you know, Mexico and Utah, various other places, you know, you think about you go to the, you go to the grocery store and you can get some food that, you know, Kings couldn't have gotten 200 years ago and just their variety. Has that given you a big appreciation for that? Yeah. Uh, and I think it's always surprising what is easily available and what isn't. Uh, I, I learned that firsthand just in the beginning when I did the sandwich because I needed salt. And I live in Minnesota, which isn't anywhere near an ocean, and there aren't any natural salt deposits nearby. So I had like this simple thing that's like on everybody's table. I had to fly to the ocean to get just just salt. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I guess I guess I don't think about that. I mean, I'm from Florida, so it's it's pretty close to, <laughs> close to where I am. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> aren't there salt mines somewhere? Don't don't people mine it too? Is that is that correct, or am I? Yeah, yeah, we had that. When we were in Utah, we had the opportunity of going to one, um, but there aren't any near Minnesota, or at least too close, and not all of them are open to <laughs> random people coming down and collecting some themselves. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. Let me just get some salt from your mind. Is that, is that cool with you? <laughs> yeah. So the salt, is that like uh, one of the most more difficult things, or what, what did you find was the most difficult to obtain or to, uh, to create? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Everything has its own unique challenge. Um, getting the iron ore uh, was pretty pretty difficult just to process that. Um, I've, I've had an ongoing difficulty just making clear glass out of uh, raw materials. It's kind of an ongoing project that I think I am pretty pretty much have solved now, hopefully. Um, so you're still not giving up, yeah? <laughs> nope. <laughs> we got... We got <laughs> basically clear glass when I went out to Utah and worked with uh, the two other YouTubers there. And, yeah. Uh, so I think... Cody and the uh, King of Random. Yep. Yep. And uh, I think just one more try. Just give it one more shot at some point and uh, get it all oh, set up. Awesome. I, I hope you finally get these glasses that you use on your thumbnail. Because <laughs> your thumbnails, they look so amazing. Yeah. It's like the, the full suit. I'm like, wow, this suit looks amazing. He really <laughs> pulled it off. And then I watched the video. <laughs> and you look like Robinson Crusoe at the end. I always feel like I'm being a little deceptive with the thumbnails. But at the same time, I don't want to spoil how it turns out. <laughs> yeah, you got to get people to click, right? So that's, yeah. that's, well, that's the name of the game, I guess. Well, so, so doing this, you know, s- certain people get credit for inventing things. You know, Wright Brothers invented the airplane. But... What do you think about the people who came before that? I mean, who should, obviously they had to have the correct internal combustion engine to be able to get the power to do it. Have that, has that ever crossed your mind about how things just go back and back and back, uh, you know, as far as the process of invention and, and making things, I guess? Yeah, definitely. And I, I find just trying to like reverse engineer everything, it's always just mind blowing. Just like, how did somebody figure this out? Like, there's this entire process you have to go through to make chocolate of, like, fermenting and roasting. And it's like, how how did somebody know to take this fruit off of a tree and do all of that <laughs> to make a delicious chocolate? It's it's so uh, kind of mind-blowing that how much work has gone into figuring this out. And it's true of uh, almost everything, like glass. Like, how did we figure out how to make glass? Who took some sand and some... Uh, other materials and melted at a super high temperature and you get something clear it's it's mind-blowing it's a lot of accidents isn't it it's almost like evolution yeah yeah that's one thing just there is a very slow progression of like how they did figure it out that kind of helps make it some sense but still there is uh it it really shows like how how many how many centuries of knowledge where uh, be- everything is based off of. And now you've got the ability to combine all this knowledge and make so many things from scratch. You know, not just one, not just glass. You make a sandwich, you make glass, you make cotton, you make all this stuff. 
Yeah, and uh, I think that's one thing I've, I've definitely discovered besides just like the centuries of knowledge that go into modern things is the specialization that uh, like people are just specialized in one little area. And like for me, uh, somebody with no experience to come in and try and make something and try and like attempt all of these different areas all at once without any without like sp spending my life learning that skill it's uh it kind of just shows how interconnected all of society is and how all of us are needed to have what we have here today it's also brave you know to tackle all these challenges what what keeps you going how you know why did you not say okay i give up this is not going to work what, what keeps you going there um i think just my own curiosity it's like every time i do a project it's just uh I just learned so many interesting things like you never even think to ask about ordinary everyday objects and I think as I might get frustrated with one and it might might fail but then I'm like look at something else and like well how is that made and I, I want to learn and I want to explore like what what went into making that and uh, I think it's just kind of a unyielding thirst for knowledge of all these ordinary everyday things. So you work on multiple projects at once, right? Yeah, uh, it's just because of the seasonality of different crops and uh, different, like, traveling to places and having to get everything we can at once, that we have to have kind of a whole year at least planned out and uh, be working on everything at once. Sounds, sounds very professional for YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> Because the two of us at the moment, we, we do, uh, you know, stuff as we go along. Like, <laughs> I don't feel like we're going to workshop tonight, so I, I won't. <laughs> But it, obviously, you do it as a full-time job, so you need to be more organized. Yeah, it's 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 a huge hassle to keep everything organized and straight and um, make sure you're figuring out every little detail in case you miss something. Because you always miss something. There's always something that comes up. Uh, like, you do as much research as you can, and then you when you actually go into executing it then you realize oh this there's not enough information about this one thing or this thing doesn't happen like they said it would and then you have to adapt and uh, sometimes things just don't work out <laughs> and, and how do you do your research do you go online or do you talk to experts uh it's a combination of uh usually start online just finding as much information as possible, sometimes go into books, uh, see what I can find at the library. Um, it, usually the best result is if you can find an expert who is familiar with it and um, has knowledge, first-hand knowledge. Um, but some topics, it's like so rare uh, that there are no experts. Like for the glass making, we worked with a glass maker and like he like, had read stuff about how it might have been done that he shared with us <laughs> but like nobody nobody makes their glass all the way from scratch or at least nobody we've been able to find so it's kind of a lost lost knowledge and uh, <laughs> so we're kind of putting together uh, like old Roman textbook stuff and trying to kind of figure it out and everything and doesn't doesn't always work out right. <laughs> So, so doing all this, you know, you, you would research inventions, how, how people made things. What, what do you think is the most important invention of the, say, past thousand years? What, what do you think that, that is? Uh, I guess covering glass has really opened my ideas, like how important it was. Um, like when it was first started, it was mostly just made for like a drinking glass so you could see your wine and the quality of it. Um, but then like how it evolved and like allows you to make glasses to correct your vision and eventually used to as a microscope to see a whole invisible world and then telescopes to see far off distant planets. And it's, it's an amazing attribute of just basically hot sand. <laughs> yeah. D did you ever read about the Hubble telescope uh, and, and, and the story of that? They put this giant glass lens uh, in the Hubble telescope, or a mirror, but they ground it to the wrong specifications, and then oh, they yeah. send it up to space, <laughs> and then they notice the, the images they get back, uh, they're actually blurred. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember hearing something but, about that. Uh, yeah, it really, uh, like, if the audience is um, interested in that, you should really um, look that up on Wikipedia. It's a great story, a great engineering story as well, because they managed to keep that broken glass, uh, broken mirror, in space and actually adapt one more part, um, send it up there and then take the right pictures. Hmm. Oh, that was an expensive mistake, I guess. So do we then talk about what we've been working on? Yeah, progress, I think. So Andy, what have you been working on this week? Uh, nothing too hands-on this week. 
I'm actually mostly still cleaning up from last week's project with the candy corn. <laughs> um, and then I'm working on editing uh, uh, ne- next couple of videos, which are wrapping up our cosmetic series, and then doing some preliminary uh, research and uh, pre-production on um, our Thanksgiving special, where I'll be attempting to make uh, a tofurkey from scratch. A, a what? To- oh, like to- tofu turkey? Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, last year or okay. a couple of years ago, we did. Um, we actually hunted my own turkey and uh, did a meal with that. And uh, every time I use an animal product, I always get like tons of hate comments from vegetarians and vegans. <laughs> so I figured. <laughs> You know. I don't watch these videos. I, I eat meat, of course. I'm not a vegetarian, but I don't <laughs> want to watch that either. Yeah. So I thought this year we'd uh, placate them and uh, <laughs> see what it would take to make a vegan uh, Thanksgiving dinner. It's a good idea. That's, yeah, I, I agree. It's a good idea. I, I got to ask, though, when you when you got these turkeys, if I can ask, did you actually did, did you make the uh, the bow and stuff? Or what, what did you use to, to I don't want to even say kill them now, now that it sounds cruel, but <laughs> what did you use to catch them? Uh, I used a gun when hunting. Oh, okay. Well, that's an easy enough solution. The American I guess. way. <laughs> yeah, the American. That's right. <laughs> you, you said you clean. You cleaned up your um, your kitchen. I guess is it your your kitchen? Yep. I uh, yeah. Live in an apartment. It really looked. Like, it is, really looked messy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I made a huge mess doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of your processes involve boiling down the water for hours, right? Yeah, it seems to be a recurring theme for uh, a few different projects. Fortunately, gas is included in my rent, so I don't have to pay for all that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, so what do your neighbors think about your exploits? Have they asked any questions, or are they pretty pretty oblivious? I think I've been able to keep it on the down low so far. <laughs> I haven't raised too many eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't murder those, those animals in your front yard. Yeah. <laughs> Do people actually uh, notice you, like on the street? Do they recognize you? Yeah, I've had a you? few people um, just around here in Minneapolis. Oh, wow. But I've also, when I've been traveling, uh, had somebody recognize me in Oregon, and uh, someone asked for their photo with me when I was in Vancouver. Oh, they didn't say, "How that dare you cool. murder that turkey?" <laughs> <laughs> nope, haven't met those fans yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thrown at with with red paint. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, killing the animals is part of eating animals, mm-hmm. but I still, they, I no, no, they, they come from the grocery <laughs> store. You don't. No, uh, nobody yeah. kills them. <laughs> they just show up, right? Isn't that? I mean, that's what you've learned from this experience, right? <laughs> so Jeremy, what have you been up to? So, uh, so this morning I put a new video on a, a case I made for my TS100 soldering iron. It, this. Um, so iron, I'm really happy with it compared to my, you know, ten dollar irons I've used before. So, I think that kind of led to my hatred of soldering in the past. So that was a nice little, nice little change for me. Um, another big thing I've been working on some changes on my Clearwalker Strand Beast. As uh, actually a, a TV show wanted to film it, so supposedly they're going to be filming it in a few days. So that'll be pretty, pretty awesome as long as long as oh, it wow. works during the day. Yeah. So they. Um, uh, oh, go ahead. Well, uh, part of what show is that? It was a show called The Daily Planet, which is a Canadian-based um, show on the Discovery Channel. And I guess they like to come to Florida in the winter and, and film people down here because it's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I really don't blame them, but um, it's... Uh, yeah. You know, so... <laughs> my, my parents are heading over there on Friday. <laughs> oh, really? What, what part of Florida are they going to yeah. be in? Oh, I'm not sure. The golf courses. Golf course. Okay, <laughs> yes. But yeah, those are the two things I've been working on. I... Hopefully, I can get everything working correctly. It's always, you know, always a little bit nerve wracking when I have somebody, some de- deadline to actually get something working. So that's yeah, kind of what I'm. But but the TV kinda, show gig sounds really nice. Yeah, I'm really happy about it. They um just kind of contacted me, and I guess I hate to like count. You know, you never know. Something could happen, but hopefully they'll be here and get to show off some of my stuff. So that'll be. Really cool. Yeah, make sure you you plaster your logo on that strand piece. <laughs> yeah, I know it, it's there. Don't don't worry. All right, fair enough. My progress this week was that I finished the coffee table project. I didn't make a coffee table, but I finished the project by burning the pieces of wood <laughs> that I've been drying for one and a half years. So, but the people seem to really enjoy the video. I've got quite a lot of positive comments, so that makes me happy. That's really really cool. I guess. Well, I guess one thing you know, we we, we asked all this, talked to you. Where do you think YouTube is going, you know, both maybe yourself and then 
just generally, where do, where do you see the whole online TV, YouTube, watching that? I, I'd, I'd love to know what, what you think about that. Um, I mean, it's it's definitely different things are getting kind of shaken up with the whole adpocalypse thing and everything. Um, I think it's hard to say what's going to happen. I'm pretty skeptical any other platforms can be able to compete with YouTube. So I think YouTube's kind of gonna has the lock of the market and uh, hopefully they uh, start doing some things better and uh, it seems like a lot of content creators are getting pretty frustrated. Um, and I think Patreon is uh, kind of the saving grace and kind of what's going to allow people to keep going and keep doing and it's kind of what i'm planning on doubling down on lately is uh making the content more for patreon than necessarily youtube well still also on youtube but it's okay going to become more and more what, what do you offer your patreons uh, we've been experimenting with a few different rewards um some of the base ones are just like early access or like once i finish a rough cut i'll throw it up there let them see it and react to it um do it do like stickers and posters and um, uh, uh, a Google Hangout where they can talk to me directly. Um, okay. Things like that, yeah. And, and did, did you notice something especially successful? Uh, I think just being engaged and being honest and uh, just engagement, I guess. Before this, we had the Patreon, but it was kind of, we were focusing on YouTube and trying to grow this year that like we just kind of... Uh, Whenever we had time, we did Patreon, and um, I think we lost a lot of people there because we uh, neglected them. Um, so now going forward, we're trying to focus and make make them like they're our primary audience from from here on. Yeah, well, I think that's a good idea because you know let those mm -hmm. pay that actually want the content. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's nice to have that option too. You know, with YouTube yeah. Red or anything else, you know, somebody's got to pay for it. So why not let people choose? That's that's really really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it works for me. I'm getting one dollar a month currently. That's great. Yeah, but that's that's one euro, right? European dollar. So that's a little that's no, like the, uh, no, like no, one ten. No. The, the the one dollar. I bet I have to pay a hefty fee because they will send me a check one day. Then I have to get the uh, euro uh, dollar conversions. So somebody <laughs> gets like a ten percent cut of that, and I have to pay probably a fifteen euro fee at my bank to cash a check. So I end up paying <laughs> to get that one dollar. Well, you know, it's uh. <laughs> With compound interest in several hundred years, that'll be lots of money, then, right? Then I'm rich. <laughs> then you'll I'm be rich. rich. Yeah, that's my plan. <laughs> yeah, but I, I still, I still keep going on Patreon, you know. Even though if I just have one supporter so far, I hope one day it, it helps grow the channel more. Well, it's it's really like nice you, of your mom yeah. to support you like that, and um, sure, <laughs> sure, your sister and dad will eventually jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so all, yeah. all that, all, all that, all that being said, so so Andy, where where can we find you if we want to, you know, view your videos, just social media, whatever? Can you uh, can you tell everybody where you can be found? Uh, yes, yeah, you can find the YouTube channel. It's called How to Make Everything. You just search for that, or it's uh, youtubecom slash TV. Um, then we're on social media. Uh, most of them are HTM, everything. And very, uh, very cool. Yeah, watch our stuff. Yeah. Oh, we too definitely will. Thanks. We watch all your videos. So, uh, so what? What about you, Max? Where, where can we find you? Uh, my Twitter handle is at uh, maxmaker uh, uh, yt for YouTube, and you can also check out my Instagram. That is uh, max underscore maker underscore YouTube, where I post uh, my. Uh, the stuff I'm working on at the moment, uh, and the best way to follow me, of course, is the Max Maker YouTube channel where I do my build projects. And how about you, Jeremy? All right, so you can find me on Twitter at Jeremy S. Cook, or my YouTube channel is also Jeremy S. Cook. All right, yeah. I'm going to make something from scratch now. I'm going to make some uh, instant noodles, <laughs> some ramen. Oh, very, very good. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, that would be actually quite a task if from scratch, <laughs> yeah. I guess. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Andy has been thinking about that, right? I haven't looked too much into it. I think I was just watched something about like a whole process of inventing instant noodles, and then there's like a special process they do to make it so that it turns out right. And uh, it could be an interesting one to do, actually. Yeah, I, I think uh, they invented it because um, somebody wanted to solve the problem of uh, food shortage, and he wanted to keep them fresh for longer. And that's how he uh, invented the ramen noodles because they store forever, basically. Hmm. Didn't know that. So. 
There you, there go. you go. All right. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it was really interesting talking to you and good luck with your channel. We wish you all the best and that your full-time employment uh, plan actually works out. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much, Andy. So if you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss out on the next one, please subscribe to us on iTunes or on SoundCloud. It's for free after all and we have some really cool guests in store. Thanks, guys. <laughs>